So I just finished up the draft or really first semi, not viable, but very semi viable version of this little weights AI app I've been working on. If you haven't seen this before, this is an AI weight tracker where basically the way it works is you interface with it like chat GPT, but it's smart enough to actually know what you're saying. So I went in here and I said something like I just benched 225 times five or whatever. It'll actually know what that means. It'll give me a nice card for this. I can save it. I can then view my current workout information. I can see what I just did and all these things. It's very much the impetus of this was to test out the new generative AI stuff that uh, Vercel has been pushing with their new AI SDK, and then it's kind of turned into a real thing, and I think I'm going to try and turn this into a real thing, but for today, what I wanted to talk about was what it's been like to develop with this very, very bleeding edge Next.js stack. This is using app directory, this is using server components, this is using Superbase. Well, I guess Superbase is really not, I wouldn't consider Superbase to be bleeding edge, but I am going to be using a lot of their PG vector vector embedding stuff to speed up some features I'm working on. So, you know, that's pretty bleeding edge. That counts. And then also, of course, the Vercel AI SDK, which is not the point of this video. That deserves a huge deep dive in and of itself. There is so much to talk about there. That is a very complicated piece of technology and it's kind of hard to work with. But once you figure out how to do it, the power you get to actually build things like this is pretty absurd. So I'm I'm very excited about all these things and how this is all working. But like I said, what I really want to talk about here is going to be the bleeding edge experience here in the new Next.js and how this is feeling. So the example I wanted to use here to show you what this is really like is going to be this little, um, let me pull it up here. If I click on manage schedule, it'll prompt it to let me manage my schedule. I can go in here and I can hit edit and this will pop up a little menu here and I can go through and set up the order of what I want to do. I can add new exercises. I can do all these things. So this right here is a very heavy, like client side state component. We can, we're reordering a list here. We can remove items from it. We have to save it up to the database. This is pretty complicated. Well, not su it's not super complicated, but it is more complex than just like basic HTML. So this is where I wanted to kind of highlight what the new Next.js looks and feels like. If you've done anything with like TRPC and the older Next.js versions, this is actually probably gonna look pretty familiar to you because the way I ended up solving this and getting this to work was not just using the new server actions, although we are using those, but actually adding in React Query. That's really the big thing I wanted to highlight here is the way you can use React Query, or I guess now it's called Tanstack Query, to interface with your server actions, wrap all those functions, and get this really really cool developer experience. It's not the simplest thing in the world to understand, but once you get it, it's really, really fucking cool. So let me show you. So this is the create new day component. There's a lot of stuff in here, but what you'll notice is that these are all mutations and queries that are being used through Tanstack query. So all of this is within a giant client component because I return these client components from the AI. The AI SDK will allow me to go through. I give it a bunch of information on like what each what each component does, and then it's smart enough to just know like, okay, you need this component for managing the schedule, and then it gives me this one. Yeah. So now that I have the client component rendered out, I can go through and just use it like a normal component. And in here, we have to do all of this management. So. The way I'm actually making this work is instead of using like TRPC or something like that, we're using server actions. And uh, let's just do the like create schedule mutation. This is a good example. So we have our little mutation key up here, which is just telling the, which is basically just a way for us to manage the global caching and all that stuff. But the really interesting thing in here is this mutation function. So the first thing I do is I make sure, okay, we have a selected day because when you go in here into the add day, we need to be able to pick one of these days and then add some exercises in and then ultimately save it. So we want to make sure that we've selected one of the days of the week. And then once we've done that, we can go ahead and just call create user schedule. But what's really interesting about create user schedule is that create user schedule is a server side front function that we can effectively just directly call from the client. In this um, helper slash schedule.ts function, I have the server only package up here. Um, in this helper slash schedule.ts function, I have use server and server only up here. I actually don't know if you need both of these to be completely honest. I should just look this up and do some research, but I don't really care. It works for right now. At some point, we'll get rid of one of these. So I don't know if you need both of these, but just to be safe, I have both of those up there to make sure that like, hey, everything in this file needs to run on the server because we're importing and calling this from the client. And Next.js does a bunch of magic behind the scenes. No clue how any of that works. But what it actually does for me is it makes it so that 
within right here, whenever I call await create user schedule, I'm literally just calling a backend function here. If you look at the source code here, I mean, this is just drizzle code. Like I'm going in here and I'm inserting into my user schedule. I'm going ahead and I'm inserting into my user schedule entries. I mean, that's, it, this is just normal backend code, which is really cool. And this also works the other way around. You can also do data fetching like this. So we went back in here and we went into our search exercise query. In this case, what I'm trying to do is if I go in here and I search up bench, I want to actually get from my database, like, Hey, we already have a bench press entry in your list of exercises. We don't need to recreate that. So I can add bench press from my database. And what we do within that search query is we just take in the search query. We send it to the database search, get the thing down. And the way we do that is again, just by calling these server actions. So we can go in here and we can just literally say, okay, so within this use query, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, our query function is just asynchronous const res equals await search for exercise. So the search for exercise goes through searches runs entirely on the server. It's in that same file. And then we go back over here. We can just get our res down here, return res.data and then work with it normally. If you've used the T3 stack before, this is very similar to TRPC. Just instead of defining the TRPC functions in the like TRPC router, we can just literally define them as functions in any file. As long as we stick use server up at the top and then it works. And this whole system feels really good. I gotta say for all the time I've spent with this, and I, you know, I probably spent like 10, 15 hours on this project so far. So like, it's very early and I have a long, long way to go. Um, and I just put it out into like a staging environment. So I have it hosted on Vercel. I have the production super base ready. I'm testing it right now. Like I'm about to go to the gym and I'm actually going to test this live tonight at the gym, see how it feels. Um, and you know, but really so far, the way I'm feeling is this is a really fun stack to work with. That's been really my biggest takeaway here. It's definitely not the simplest thing in the world. The way like explaining this to someone who has never done any react or any like web dev stuff, I feel like teaching them Svelte would be a lot easier than teaching them this. But once you have a good understanding of the client of the server of how all these things work, you have a good mental model of react, uh, you understand react query, the way all these things fit together is just really, really fun to work with. I really, I don't know. I've really enjoyed building this thing. That's kind of why it even got built. I didn't initially intend to go that deep into it, but I've just, I just kind of find myself sitting here and I'm like, man, I really want to work on this because it's just fun. Um, the AI SDK is also really fun to work with. I uh, need to spend more time with it and learn more about it. But the way, I mean, I don't know. I've showed this off in videos before and it's not the point of this video, but I do just want to show it here. Um, the, the, just the fact that this works and they have it built out so nicely to where I can just define functions like add sets and I can pass in all this stuff and then it just kind of works and it knows how to call it. And then it, that allows me to within the UI say like bench, wait, reps, send, and then it knows what that means is really, really cool. The, I don't know, the AI stuff I think is, the AI stuff is really exciting and I'm actually, uh, the more I use it, the more I'm enjoying it and the more I want to build with it. Um, you know, it's still early. I still have a lot to learn here, but I think overall, my whole point here is the stack has been very fun to work with. Um, all of this code is completely open source. It's linked down below. If you guys want to check it out and play with it yourselves, definitely check this out if you're interested in it. I will have more detailed uh, videos about this in the future. I think definitely something I want to do in May is I want to make uh, some pretty heavy, like full tutorial things. There are a lot of things that I think are missing that in the tutorial space. I think we need a full AI SDK tutorial, like a nice, nice long three hour breakdown of how to build a basic generative UI application. I think that's needed. I think a um, full stack spell kit uh, super base tutorial is definitely needed. Um, th there's a couple other ones I'm thinking of. I think I'm going to really dedicate a lot of time to that just because these, these need to exist. There's so much cool stuff in here and um, I, I just... I can't fit all of this into like one smaller little video, but I can definitely fit this into like a big three hour thing. So look forward to that. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you like and subscribe and I will talk to you soon.